Plants versus zombies. I think most people will be able to recognize at a glance. It's an iconic casual game, and for good reason. It's got the style, it's got the grace, it's also got the age now, and that's super interesting to me. Seriously, this game is like 13 years old now. That's really old considering a lot of franchise fans are, in fact, younger than the game itself, and that is fascinating. I think it was a groove for me. There's a ton of videos covering Plant for Zombies 1 in a more modern lens. The issue? These are all made by noobs who don't even know where to place the darn sunflowers, so clearly they're all factually wrong and incapable of judging the game objectively, skillfully, and with other terms I can use to pretend I'm superior. Unlike them, I miss Woody Tryhard. If you kinda. I mean, I may have a mod for Plant for Zombies 2. I've played ha even hard modes of some Plant for Zombies 2 mods, dabbled in PvZ1 mods briefly, played some other just wacky shenanigans in general, etc, etc. Plant for Zombies 1 kicked off a franchise, and as someone who has basically been so involved with the evolution of that said franchise from a gameplay perspective, I have to wonder how the game itself holds up in this knowledge. I'll be playing the Game of the Year version available on Steam. I want to give this game a fair shot, and while this game really kicked off on mobile devices, I want to play the best version of the game. But the console version is a pain to set up, so I just did the PC version. The console version has additional content, but the amount of hoops jump through is obscene. But it's just not really an accessible version of the game these days, my justification, so it really makes no sense to base my opinion on a version of the game that's practically obsolete. Now, let's get started. Firstly, I'm gonna cover technical issues, because honestly, they are probably my end, or a sign of age, or the version I played. In general, things looked a little... crusty, and while the game itself ran well, it lagged a lot on the seed select screen, and I don't quite know why. The game is also in 4.3, which is a super idea format for most things these days. I believe this is in part due to 3D acceleration, which I know does cause some issues, as in like a lot of the overall issues with uh, vision presentation and just lagging things in a few cases. But I have to mock if I was recording to make it actually look good, as it really didn't like to show up properly. Fun. Uh, beyond that, the game actually ran pretty much totally fine. I just want to mention the issues now, because these aren't really to do with the game itself, I think. And these issues are totally understandable for a game of its age. So, yeah. Game is still playable on this version. Of course you can still play other versions, the mobile version is still very accessible, and I believe has literally none of these issues. But you can't force me to play the mobile version, okay? Either way, there is one thing that predates any discussion of PvZ in the modern day. It's by far the easiest plan for the Zombies game. Like, it's very hard to lose this game while you have any experience of the gameplay prior. Ways are slow, the vast majority of specials are super weak, while you have some of the strongest plants in the franchise, such as Puffstream and Gloomstream, at their strongest. If you know I played PvZ, you'll probably not have a hard time. In fact, you will likely be challenged a grand total of one or two times in the entire game, and even then for short bursts. Now, there are still some things that remain challenging in this game, but most are entirely optional, and the other half requires a play themselves to seek it out, for achievements and the like. These aren't exactly what I'll call hard, but alone they can pose much challenges, and I actually enjoy going for most achievements. I'll try to diversify my strats often, running subpar plans, and instead doing what I thought was enjoyable. It worked quite nicely, though I do wish there more achievements in this version of the game, as there's some noble achievements that are excluded from this version. Either way, this is still a criticism of playing the game one day. Even from Plant vs Zombies 2, you've likely seen way harder than this game can offer in the vast majority of its playtime. And this though difficulty is actual problem. Plants vs Zombies itself lacks a lot of later innovations that later games started to use to make their levels more interesting, such as varying lawn states from level to level, more use of zombies with special abilities, and mechanics like objectives. This game can be a drag sometimes, especially with no fast forward button available, which was introduced in the sequel. This, combined with some of the longest levels in the series, can make playing PvZ1 somewhat hard to go back to. Oh, also, in case you're curious, yes, placing some clouds like this is actually optimal. I think people who are unaware will complain to me if I don't elaborate, but in short, some flowers make 50 sun worth of sun very quickly. They also swallow zombies for some time while they try to eat them, and they are some of the cheapest plants you have access to. It may seem incredibly dumb, but some flowers aren't actually individually valuable, or at least individually super valuable. They cost a lot less than any other offensive plant you are running, and so you would pretty much always rather lose sunflower over any other plant, especially because they don't make your defense weaker immediately and loss. Either way, the low difficulty is still a problem with this strand mind. Thankfully, it is somewhat mitigated by charm. Because, good lord, Plant vs Zombies 1 is heaping with it. Plant vs Zombies 1 art direction is super unique, and the style of the game is definitely super iconic. Plants in Plant vs Zombies 1 are all super distinctive, tend to stand out well, with enough details to look good, but not enough to craft a design. At least in game. 
Some plants are in those limes that we use to create in-game aspects actually look kind of bad. Chomper in particular, looking super off. Still, in-game most plants tend to look appealing, and in general the game's aesthetic is strong. The Almanac is also just fantastic. It's a fun idea and just builds a great deal of character for the game as a whole, while also being a convenient place to gain information for plants and zombies. I really do like the Almanac, and I think it's at its best here. Another thing that's best for Zen Garden, as it's the best incarnation of the system too. The Zen Garden is just super neat as a concept. Unfortunately it's time based so I can't show it off great here, but something just to come back to and muck with. It's also simultaneously super weird and out of nowhere, while totally fitting in. Like, of course a game of plants is going to have a super chill gardening mode. It's what plants are for after all. But it's also just not something the game ever really focuses on, and I really like that. It also gives players a reason to return, which is fair enough. This game isn't meant to be quickly after all, with a lot of content that will take time to complete. Either way, it just builds charm. Charm is just something that helps games like this stay memorable, and to an extent it helps mitigate boredom. In Nova Plant for Zombies game, can you design a zombie avatar, and have it act as a flag zombie for the rest of the game? In Nova Plant for Zombies game, can you fight zombies with plant heads that take on their traits? In Nova Plant for Zombies game, do zombies have a huge variety in death animations that keeps adding variety to small things? In these regards, Plant for Zombies 1 stands out above the rest. The plants themselves also go into this, though they are also a certain and definitive point of contention. Plants vs Zombies plans are unlocked differently from other games. In the sequel, you get plants once every few levels. In the first, you get a plant after four fifths of the levels. It's a lot of plants, and most of them are fairly unique, if you ignore the fact that pretty much all of them return in future games. This isn't necessarily a massive issue of the game, but you will recognize mostly plants if you have played a lot of the franchise, and those you don't tend to be nothing special. However, the variety is still strong. Plants have a wide array of roles, gimmicks, and ways they can offer new strategy. Using most plants and finding out how they work can generally be fairly enjoyable. Finding use of plants like Chomper, Starfruit, and Spikeweed just is fun in its own right, and that's something that the game really does capture, I think. The issue is that these are never really required, and the game itself tends to really want to funnel you down into using other options. A solid 30 to 40% of the plants in this game are nocturnal, meaning that you're unable to use them for most of the game until you unlock off a bean near the end of the game. Even beyond this, a lot of areas require certain plants. You can't plant Spikeweed in the water on a roof. You can't use standard shoes on roof, unless you seriously want to handicap your range. Oh, also just totally off script here, but I want to point out that the game lets you have access to a spike rock and like 5-1. The game gives you spike rock before you just hit, before you beat the first level of, of the, the one area where you can't use spike weed or spike rock in any capacity. I, I, I do not have an excuse or an explanation to this, I, I just want to bring it up because I think it's incredibly funny. That is all. However, this isn't a major issue unless you're specifically aiming for variety. But to get enjoyment out of this game experience I had, I have to make things more unique. Again, I played a lot of Plan for the Zombies, so I needed something more unique than just your normal gameplay. That isn't to say if a standard day-to-day -day gameplay is bad, however, most of that just doesn't offer much in the context of the games. Or at least Plan for Zombies 2 mods, where gameplay is inherently a lot harder and you have to master the game to an extent. I doubt playing Plan for Zombies 2 would be similar alone, but in my experience a lot of areas felt incredibly dull because my options were being taken away, without much difficulty being placed instead, if that makes any sense. This is mostly because of a low difficulty, but also the general plan and zombie design Plan for Zombies tends to go for, which I've always described as lock and key design. Let's look at Umbrella Leaf for an example of what I mean. Umbrella Leaf has no active ability. It's a plant which is purely defensive, but lacks a true defensive profile. Its ability is to protect every plant in a 3 times 3 radius around itself, from two zombies total. Catapult zombies and bungee zombies. Bungees are debatably dangerous, but you don't really need to worry about them too much, as they only take one plant at a time and often this will be something useless, like a sunflower, which pose no real problems. Catapults are a serious problem, but you only need to place two umbrella leaves total to totally count them for the entire level, and from then on they will do literally nothing. The lock here is the catapult zombies. They are a major threat and can take out a lot of plants left unattended. They only, however, have one key, Umbrella Leaf. You will only ever bring Umbrella Leaf when levels have Cannibal Zombies. In fact, every level of Bungie Zombie, the more debatably interesting zombie to count with Umbrella Leaf, has Cannibal Zombie post his first appearance. And post his first appearance is when you get Umbrella Leaf. The issue with this is that there is no skill or challenge of Umbrella Leaf or Cannibal Zombie. There is no challenge to counter and catapult, but Cannibal Zombies also will generally require you to use Umbrella Leaf, unless you specifically don't want to counter for whatever reason. It lacks challenge, and this is a philosophy that extends beyond the zombie. A lot of zombies are designed with specific counters that totally shut them down in mind, and this removes a lot of the strategy. 
It doesn't help that the only character cannibal zombie is the Umbrella Leaf, however. You can't deal with it reliably with plants such as Pumpkin, as unlike in future games, Pumpkin can be avoided by attacking from above. This is designed to be bad alone, but other plants and zombies also follow the design principle. This works fine for a casual game for casual players. Simple question which does force a player to change how they play in at least some way, which casual players are less likely to do. When you're more skilled with more experience, it really becomes a problem instead of benefit and detracts from the experience. This also extends to plants like Sea Shroom, which can literally be used in one area and nowhere else. Similar to Platinum 2, which can only be used in fog, and that's it. It's a common design for Plant vs. Zombies 1, and I'm not necessarily fond of it. However, outside of this, the plants themselves are generally fairly solid when you can use them. A lot of plants have some fun elements to them, and helps give access to upgrade plants. Plants take a lot of effort to get out in the field, but are unique and fun to use. Plants like Free Peter and Starfruit are just neat conceptually. Plants like Spike Weed encourage totally different support. Garlic exists, and so forth. It's a good set of plants, and is the reason most of them have become iconic in their own right. The zombies, though, are a little bit sadder. A lot of zombies appear so rarely that they aren't a real issue under any circumstances most of the time, and rest designed to be countered by one or two plants. It's a shame, as a lot of these zombies are fundamentally pretty good. This game reduced the gargantuas, a zombie type will become more important in the rest of the series, but also as Balloon, the single worst designed zombie to me in any PvZ game. It may have ladder zombie, the most unique anti-war zombie in the entire franchise as far as I'm concerned, but also has Pole Vaulter and Dolphin Rider as separate zombies, which do the same thing. There's certainly some standouts here and there, but even these standouts tend to struggle to be relevant, as the game will very rarely spawn them in normal play. If zombies like Newspaper were spawned earlier in levels, or similar, the levels can feel more unique and these zombies can be more important. But in this current state, this lack of zombie diversity in game actually hurts the game massively, and I think this is the most significant flaw of the game. It doesn't use the unique zombies often enough, and this can cause repetition to really set in hard. However, there is one zombie that is far more important than the others. A zombie so important, that literally became a mainstay of the series, became such a fan favourite, from one single appearance, that they became an internal presence in the entire series. I'm of course, talking about Zomboss. Why did they make the final boss of a game about plants and zombies a giant robot that throws off these a roof, can spit ice and fireballs, and otherwise it's just a giant massive robot? I don't know. We created the best boss fight in the entire damn franchise, and I adore it. It's just a fantastic fight and ends the game on a very nice high. It's a fight that feels manic and does everything to push you ahead, while keeping you pushed back, or just constant attacks that's just removing your entire field. It's just, it's just good. It also ends a music video that... It definitely sounds dumb now. I still love for nostalgic reasons. It's simply better than zombie time at least. Anyway, the game game on a cute music video is just fun, and it's beloved for various reasons. Uh, thankfully, this is where Plant vs Zombies 1 picks up, because now the side content is allowed to exist, and the side content is the reason why the game is actually worthwhile in one day. It's just really that good. Firstly, we are going to cover the shop, Crazy Dave's Twitty Dinkies. I will refuse to call by it ever again. Anyways, the shop is unlocked much earlier for the game, and will expand throughout the course of the game. The shop will offer upgrade unique mowers, allowing them to work in pool and roof, but also upgrade plants. These are super potions of plants, you need to plant other plants, and are super fun to just muck around with, and are crucial to a lot of optional game modes. These are bought with coins, which you can from normal play, and from cleaning side content, and are the main incentive for doing so. You can also gather Zen Garden supplies here, which makes sense. So we should note that the coins given are weird sometimes. Like, puzzles in game are split into Vosberg and iZombie. For some weird reason, Vosberg gives 250 coins on completion, while iZombie gives a full 1000. I have no clue why, but it is convenient, because I can segue over talking about puzzles now. Puzzles are fairly brief and in two parts. The aforementioned Vosbreaker and iZombie. Vosbreaker is played in the main game and is a fun little distraction, but it's definitely less of an opponent's Y Zombie, the clear fan favourite. Zombie lets the player, well, plays as zombies, with its own set of rules. These are also very easy, but that's a standard so it's not too surprising. They are just fun and are a fairly quick romp to get through. I think it's just a fun variety in the gameplay, so I do appreciate their existence. The minigames further this theme and are the best content in the entire game. These aren't exactly all winners, but a lot of these are actually interesting and fun. The biggest challenges the game has to offer will also appear here, so be wary of that, though these levels are generally fun and super varied. 
from references of a pop game I haven't played, and you probably haven't either, to fighting zombies or plant heads, to love where zombies are totally invisible, and so on and so forth. These minigames are really strong, and were a very fun ride to go through, allowing the players to use a lot of plants they otherwise may not have, and showing off fun game killer concepts that people will remember fondly to this day. I'm mean, specifically going to bring up Zombonny 2 here, as it's by far the highest thing in the game in my opinion. Zombonny 2 is a very interesting level with a lot of interesting elements, being incredibly difficult and not how to approach it because it was intended to be, and it's fantastic for that. And we're going to end on survivals. These are a fan favourite never returned, but are essentially a long level wave to build defence that can last a long time, potentially forever. This is generally enjoyable, but it is very long winded, and you beat up to 10, each can take a very long time. It's clear why it's in return, but its long windedness and the like made any of the PZ2 that you went with a lot more appealing to me personally. But in general, a lot of things in PZ2 stand out more to me. The zombies in the game are better, the mechanics, objectives, and things that make that game superior in a lot of ways. In addition to a reduction in plants that have one purpose and only one purpose. If you played a lot of PZ2, playing the first game afterwards will feel very generic, though the game is cheap to free, so there isn't much downside to playing it, frankly. Yet, I still prefer the first game. It's still my favourite PvZ game, always will be, and me replaying the game really affirmed that. Why? Well, because the entire video is pointless, ain't it? Games alongside all the media are inherently valueless. The value and quality of anything is always predominantly in the eye of one experiencing it. People just like being told that something is good or bad, and being proven right by others. Final Zombies is not a perfect game. It definitely is not a super engaging experience with the context that I have, but I still enjoyed the time I spent playing the game, in spite of my experience with the franchise telling me otherwise. Plants vs Zombies is a game that means a lot to people. I mean, that's just what nostalgia is for, right? As much as I can look at it negatively now, that doesn't negate much about this game. It's still iconic, it's still a classic, and I will still keep memories of this game for as long as I live. Here's the thing. Playing Clans of Zombies reminds me a lot of when I was younger, and playing the game. You know, the good old days kind of deal. That should be fairly obvious, I mean, I got super into PvZ mods later in my life, so it's clear this game series always meant something, and that will always remain. The reason this game means a lot to me will remain beyond the actual game itself, so I will always love this game. I'm sure you yourself can think of games like this too. Games which you absolutely wouldn't enjoy nowadays, but meant a lot to you at the time, and act as memories, regardless of any actual qualities they have. That is the purpose of all media as far as I'm concerned, to create memories and experiences, and be able to create meaning through these elements. That's always been the goal of the game, not necessarily deeply emotionally, but just to allow people to remember and create good memories of experiences, to have something to associate to. Time for Zombies is one of those games to me, and always will. A anyways, uh, subscribe, like, and comment, I guess, I don't know, like, I'm getting decently close to 1k, and that would be neat to get soonish. Uh, bye.